So, sit down here a little bit. Um, I'm Jeff Gatewood. A lot of folks know me as Clovis Snapper. Uh, I live here in Truman, Arkansas. Uh, got a different camera and hadn't figured out how to get the uh, remote control uh, to work on it. So, if y'all bear with me, I'm going to hadn't put on a video in a while. I'm going to try to make a video of showing how to notch a lost lake arrowhead. And I've got one right here. Here's one that I made. I'll show you this. And if you can see the notches in that. Lost Lake arrowheads are basal notch points. And if you look, it's pretty thin. And these arrowheads actually if you're going to notch something like a lost lake or calf creek, uh, it needs to be real thin in the base. Uh, even if you're making a Snyder's point, uh, it needs to be thin. Most basal notch points are thin, with the exception of maybe a Smith point or a Netley. But uh, lost lake's actually one of my favorite arrowhead styles, or a Kurt. This one actually could be a current because I hadn't beveled it yet. And I have this biface right here that I chipped a while ago. I'll bring this up here and show it to you. This is just a piece of raw burlington flint. And it's not perfect. It's very tough. And sometimes, because it's tough, that actually works. It can help you as you get something that's chips extremely easy it's also easy to break the air off you know but it does flake better you know a lot of times if you get something flakes real easy you can also you don't have to punch flake you can pretty much pressure flake it with a horseshoe nail uh, tools I'm going to be using today <clears throat> is these right here I'll show you what I got Turn a light on here so y'all can see a little better. Okay, this right here is a number six finish nail, and I smash it flat and I file a little groove in there, and I use that for punch notching. And I use sometimes I use my edger, which is just a a piece of copper pipe that I've smashed flat on the end. I use a file it and as I use it, it kind of makes it concave right here. And this right here is a, a little tool I come up with a long time ago. This is a 16 penny nail that I've smashed flat and I made it into a blade. And it's fairly thin. I don't heat it or nothing, it's still really hard and I can reach up in there and pull notches out and of course I like my diamond file all right I'm gonna take and zoom in a little bit here so y'all can see what I'm doing and it may take me a minute to adjust my camera and get it just like I need it first thing I'm gonna do here's my bio face Lay it in my lap, and I'm going to look and draw my notches. This one, I think I'm going to notch it like this. Turn it that way. And it helps me to draw my notches. I use a Sharpie. You can just as well use a a pencil, actually a pencil is probably better because if something happens and I don't get the notch all the way, then I'm left with a mark that I can't get off. But right there is going to be my notches. Like I said, this is a piece of raw burlison. Pretty tough stuff. I'm going to start this out with this. This piece of soft leather. I believe I'm going to try this side first. Just push down. I 
Okay. Open up just a little bit right here at the base. Hear that pop? Pops out a nice little cone plate. I don't want to open up any more than what I just did. You can do a lot of your notching just with this. I mean, all I did is start it. And that's what I like to do. If I want to, I can start them and make them really fine. Uh, I can make a real fine entry notch. On a lot of slates, though, I've only seen a few real ones that's got a fine entry notch. Most of them start out about this wide. Now, that pulled a really nice cone shaped flake out. And all I'm doing with that file is I'm just abrading. Mm, that's a good flake. Okay. Now I'm not use my punch just a little bit. Really nice flake. And also I got this horseshoe nail. Horseshoe nail works really good for cleaning up, especially if you're flint flaking. And if you've got a really good piece of flint, you can use the horseshoe nail to, to do all the notching. Raw Burleson I like. It, uh, but it's not necessarily what you would say easy to work. But I do like the way it works. And if you want to know about the angle, it's a good way to show you. I don't know exactly the angle. But that's the angle I usually knock the flake out. And you can see the cone flake still laying there. See, that flake flew off. Well, it's like the stem is shaped similar to a heart in a lot of them. And I, I think they're related somehow. <clears throat> okay, if I can give, I need mean, to break it better. If it slips off real easy, then you probably not a braided good. See, I got a really good flight that time. All right, now what I'll do, I'm, I'm going to try to shape it a little. And I'll probably have to adjust it some more as I do the other side. Okay, let's see if you can see that notch. What I'm going to do is try to repeat that on the other side. It looks like it's already there because of the black marker. Get that on my lap a little better. 
Okay. A lot of times what I'll do also is I'll pick the first, the hardest notch first. The side I think will be the hardest. And I don't know why I do it. I, I guess that way if it messes up I can make it into something else. See, I can start out real narrow, but I want my notches to match. Alright, I think I'll start from right there and push the flex off. Go ahead and I'll break this a little bit. Push off. Well, I'll slice. You got to start out with a, a good wide, and the thinner at the base that it is, the better. Kind of like a calf creek. You want to start out with something really thin at the base. Clean up that flake that I took out with that horseshoe. Nail. Tough. A lot like the Crowley's Ridge that we have around here. Pretty tough. If, if all you're used to napping is heat treated stuff, you get a piece of this, it will be challenging for you. Still, the nail sitting right on it. And lost lights have a have a really good bevel on them most times. So what I'll do is once I finish this arrowhead, as far as the notching for the break it. Then what I'll do is I'll come back and resharpen it so I got a good bevel on it.
This is some raw burlesque now I got off of Donnie McKinnis. And I'm really, I'm really proud of it. Can do what I want to. Sometimes old arrowheads, uh, you know, modern flint nappers like to put the corners all sharp on everything and real sharp ears. And that's alright, but uh, you know, I've not seen very many old points that had real sharp ears or corners or, you know, most of that stuff was gone. I, you don't see a lot of them on mine because I, I try to make them look as much like the old ones as I can. Now I have seen a lot of old points that will have real sharp, big sharp right here. I've seen it a lot of times on Hardens, Lost Lakes, and even Calf Creeks. It'd be real sharp right there at the, where the notch ends. I don't really know why they did that, but they did. And I will say, be very careful when you brush these flakes off. Because I have cut myself pretty bad before by raking a flake off. Try 
your best not to uh, not to break the ears off. Right here is the finished product, and I was real careful with that. And now, see, you have a really nice deep basal notch point. Hopefully, this video shows it really good. Put up to this buffalo hide. And I hope y'all enjoyed my video. And hope maybe I'll see some of you at Water Creek. Thank you.